word wizards welcome back to another episode of am i right today we have the fabulous laura atencio which i hope i said your last name correctly i should have asked you that before we were started recording it's laura pensatencio atencio pensatencio i love that yes. um and she is just fabulous and she's going to talk to us today about a little bit about ai some marketing tips as a guru herself and dabbling in um, both for authors and on other marketing business side of marketing um, and i'm just really excited to kind of get to know her and her journey and so without further ado laura do you want to introduce yourself to the audience sure hi i'm laura pensatencio and i am the owner of social savvy geek and the coaches compass where i help authors speakers and podcasters who are coaches or consultants to get more done in less time so they can meet their marketing goals, increase their business and impact and not sacrifice their time freedom. Mm, I love that. And we'll talk about <laughs> this a little bit more later, but AI actually does save you so much time and it's not something massive, you're fresh, so. massive amounts I'm, of time. Yeah. I'm excited to talk about that. But before we get to that, I, I just kind of wanted to touch, I, I read her, her bio and something that really stuck out to me was that you decided and it's a bold decision that you've made to go all in on authors so it wasn't all authors for you and now you're making that leap and i just was wondering you know what about your previous experience with authors made you kind of move in this direction you know where do you get your fulfillment out of that and you know where are you headed sure well, i've been working with coaches who are speakers authors and podcasters for the past 13 plus years so um during the time that i've been working with these people, I've realized that my favorite clients were all authors. They're also coaches. They're also podcasters. They're also speakers. They're also other things. But my favorite clients were all authors. And my favorite projects working on them were launching and marketing their books. And so everything revolved around launching and marketing the book. Even if we did funnels to lead to their programs, even if we built out a website, no matter what we did, it all focused or started with the book. Mm -hmm. So when all of your favorite people are authors, then it's easy to say, okay, authors are my people and <laughs> go in on that. Mm -hmm. You're in good company. <laughs> I love it. I love that. And <clears throat> from what I experience, even with just doing this podcast, you just meet the most incredible people who, mm -hmm. you know, it's love story and taking through things and sharing what they've learned with others. And it's just great to be a part of this community. So I'm glad that you yeah. jumped all in. We're happy to have you here. I seldom find boring authors. Agreed. <laughs> I don't think I've yet to find one, actually. That's a great, that's a great point. Uh, so as a leading authority on digital marketing and business growth, mm -hmm. what is a mistake or maybe it's something that people aren't aware of that you see in authors mm -hmm. that they keep making that maybe if they remedied it, they could expand their outreach, spend their their growth, their business? Well, I find that a lot of authors, and it doesn't matter if they're working with a small publishing house or if they're working with an independent or it, it doesn't matter. They don't have support after the launch. So they come in and they think if they're publishing with a small publishing house, they think, oh, they're going to market my book for me. All I have to do is write the book and show up and you know maybe do some book signing. They have this romanticized idea of what being an author is and if they're self-published then they think oh well I'm going to write this book and that's the hardest part and then I'm going to tell people that I have it and then it's going to sell but that's not how it works it doesn't happen that way at all so failure to plan past the book release is the most common mistake that I see hmm. yeah hmm. and I it's something if you've been keeping up on the episodes to the audience you know at this point the pet it's just the beginning once you publish that book. You have got a long ways to go. And the more that you can do for yourself, regardless of what the publisher or your agent is doing for you, mm -hmm. the farther you will get. And so uh, marketing is such an important part of that. But I think it makes a lot of us scared as creatives because we, you know, that's not what we chose te technically to go into. Yeah, of course. And, yeah. And I think it, but I think it can be fun. And I think it can be very fulfilling if you do it the right way. And well, she'll mention this later, but she teaches classes, workshops for this. And I think just getting more aware of the, the methods that you can use to market yourself and the ways that you can kind of show your personality and, and promote yourself as a brand or promote your business that you're using your book as a, you know, kind of a catalyst for is really important. So that's really cool that you, you know, are helping people with that. I think it's going to be really helpful. So 
Um, I let's dive into AI because I'm just dying to talk about it. I I've had it come into my business this year, and mm -hmm. when they first announced, you know, okay, we're gonna use this new AI program, um, and it's gonna like basically you know write some things for you. I was like, oh, it's my job. Like, am I mute now? Like, <laughs> it's my job important. It is still important. Obviously, once you read it, you know, like you, there's a lot to be done and a lot of humanity to add into it, but. Uh, you know, what's your experience with AI? What gets you excited about using that for your writing? You say it saves time. You know, what ways does so it, much time. You it save time? Well, so my problem when I'm trying to articulate things is that I have severe ADHD. So it's like squirrel brain. And I have 1000 things going on at all times in my brain. I have like the open tab syndrome like crazy. Um, mm -hmm. And so when I'm looking at marketing my business, my problem isn't, oh, what what could I possibly do to provide value? It's what, how could I articulate the thousand things that I know how to do really well because I've been doing this so long and I'm a, you know, I'm a polymath and I have all these skills and talents and how can I present that in a way that makes somebody want to engage with me and buy something right this minute? But if I word vomit into the AI and tell it all my thoughts, it will say, here are the common things and in, in that your audience is looking for right now that you could provide to them. And it gives me a list. And then I can say, Ooh, I want to focus on these two things. And I could take that and um, really just put out content that is all me because it got, it got this from me. It's my ideas. It's I've told it my ideal clients. I've set the parameters. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. AI doesn't do anything on its own. Mm -hmm. Like it nope. doesn't do anything without input. So it matters what you put in as to what you get out. It's the same way if people are like, well, I'm not going to hire a designer because I have Canva. And I'm like, but should you, should you do that? Can you, does it going to look like crap? You know, <laughs> um, which, you know, I went to school for art and design. So I use Canva, but that doesn't mean you should use it. But of course there, you can learn certain things. Um, and I actually teach that it's part of my AI, AI class. My point is it, it doesn't do anything without you. So they can't replace you. And even once you're doing um, marketing content, if, if you wanted to use it in say book development or structural development or to check for potholes or whatever you're using it for, AI cannot add personal stories, experiences. It doesn't understand love. It is not human. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to humanize the writing. It can mm -hmm. mimic your voice. And one of the first things that I do is train it and you have to train the chat. You can't just expect it to know you and put stuff out right away, but you train it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll give it all the copy from my website, from my homepage and my about page and give it my bio. And then it will tell me really nice things about myself. Mm -hmm. It is so complimentary. If you ever need an ego boost, go and take some of your writing and your bio and give it to the AI and it will tell you how awesome you are. It's so cool. <laughs> it's, it'll be like, you are a very impressive person. La, la, la. And it starts saying all the good things that it sees about your stuff. It's it's a huge ego boost. I, I highly recommend it. Anyway, once you do that, then I feed it like a couple of my favorite blog articles that I wrote by hand all by myself. And I feed those to it. And then I say, do you understand? And it says, yes. And it tells me about my writing style. And then I say, I want content written about a specific thing. Like I, I need blog articles or I need um, website copy or whatever it is that I need. And I tell it exactly what I want. And then it'll give it to me in my voice because I told it to. And then I can say, this is, this is great. It sounds just like me. But then you still have to go in and revise because it's a machine. So, mm -hmm. but it takes a week long process into a one day process. So it saves massive, massive amounts of time. And it's, it is so much fun. I just, I'm teaching this workshop. I've had like, I got over a hundred people through right now and they're saying their minds are blown and they just didn't have any concept of how amazing this could be and that it, you know, it's fun. Um, hmm. They were just, you know, terrified. Now they're having fun. So Who's and that's a big leap. <laughs> yeah. Even though it looks like there's an invasion behind her. AI is not going to invade. It's that's not oh, AI. Those are Tie Fighters. They have yeah, those are pilots. those are from Star Wars. <laughs> but it, it's a tool, and I love that you talk about how it kind of more organizes your thoughts for you. It's more of like an outline yeah. tool, right? Yes, because it's exactly. not 
sometimes getting to that point, just barfing onto the page, right? There's the usual word vomit. It and then away the blank you have to, syndrome. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. It takes that. And that's, I think, where a lot of people get paralyzed with their mm -hmm. content, especially their marketing content. They just don't know where to start. It's overwhelming. They get to that place where they could write something and they're like, I don't know what to even say and what and, topic to pick. Yeah. And, well, and the biggest takeaway for this is I will feed in. And some people are like, well, it's only going to give you you know, things that everybody else has said, and then you're going to sound just like everybody else. Well, kind of yes and kind of no. But here's the thing. If I'm sitting here struggling what to write about a blog, blog article, and I've asked it, what are the top five struggles my ideal clients are facing right now? And it gives me the struggles. And then I say, you know, give me 20 uh, blog post ideas on how to combat those struggles. And it puts them down there. And then I say, oh, I like this one idea. Give me a sample outline for that. And it does. And then I'm like, oh, I don't like this one point, another point, take that out and then write it. And then it writes me an article. Then at that point, I either agree with what it's written or I disagree. And then I'm all, oh, this is what I'm going to say. And I'm on a roll. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. it is so easy to say, that's that's not right. I'm going to, ooh, and then you do, you know, then you write what you are reaction, you know, like you have a reaction, a visceral reaction, and all of a sudden you know what to say. So the blank page is gone and the writing is happening. And like, I write better in reaction to a negative than I do trying to think of the positives. So even if you completely disagree with that AI gives you, that's fantastic because you're writing. <laughs> Because now you have points already in your head flying yeah. about why you disagree. And exactly. That's really, that's really good. That's really good. Yeah, then you can take the average, the normal, the what it gave you, and you can counterpoint it. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you agree or disagree. Because if you agree, yeah. you're like, great, this is fantastic. I'm going to tweak it and publish. And if you disagree, yeah. then you're going to tear it all down and write your own thing. And then you're ready to publish. Either way, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I'd say it saved me at least five hours a week just from like, the content that I'm trying not no <laughs> at least when I and I I'm talking if I'm part-time but uh, I okay. I think it's it's been really interesting because I think too you have to know what to tell it like you say you have to know what to tell it right so if you're just come up there and you're like I don't know write me an article it's not gonna be that good no but when you've I been utilizing in, it but when you've been in your job and you've been in your role and you've been writing for the past decade I mean I've been writing uh for 13 years so I have a huge, vast library of content. So I can put something in there that I wrote and then say, okay, let's update this for now. And then it's literally taking what I said with other things and putting it in there. And I'm like, well, now I have something new. Um, and it didn't take me, but you know, half an hour, whereas before I would have, I would have spent a whole day on it. Mm. Yeah. So Agreed. yeah. And concerning original content, right. Mm -hmm. Because it does pull from data points that already exist. Mm -hmm. I would put the caveat in there that nothing you come up with creatively hasn't probably been told before. It just hasn't been told by you, right? That's the difference. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. We have so much content out there. We have so much fiction content, nonfiction, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. That we're to the point where that we're not really discovering new things in writing. We're just putting, pairing them together in new ways, new and creative well, and you ways. Can't, Let's steal your voice. You don't want to use AI to like completely write your whole book because then you can't copyright mm -hmm. it. And then you mm -hmm. can't copyright it because it's <laughs> not your content. However, if it's a collaborative process where you're feeding it your work and it's mm -hmm. giving you something, that it's still your work because it's your mm -hmm. words that it's rearranging for you. So you have to watch. There is a line where you can't just give it a concept and have it completely write the thing without your involvement because then you can't copyright it. And if you create art using the image generators, you can't copyright that either, which I mean, at this point, does, does the art for a cover matter that much? Probably not. I mean, <laughs> once people have bought the book, like, yeah, but, yeah. You can't, but it's something to think about. Like you could yeah. use one piece and then draw out other parts, but you don't want to use AI 100% because then you can't copyright. It's not your work anymore. Um, right, so there but is, if I was there is if a line. I rejected at AI and was like, no, I want to be original. What I come up with is still based off of all the experiences that have already mm -hmm. been given to me and all the things I've already read, right? So it's not a matter of taking away your creativity and identity. It's just a matter of organizing it, right? Into, yes, into clear thoughts it. and cutting the time frame. And I love that you brought that up because I think that's yep. a really important point to distinguish is that it's not just me robotically here's a piece of robot content that's not helpful to you no, it's still the AI, the, 
the AI is an assistant. It's a conversation you're having. It's called a chat for a reason. You're literally having a conversation with this assistant and you can have the AI uh, take on different, different roles. As a matter of fact, I'm using a tool right now called Magi, um, which is a paid tool and paid chat GPT is at this point, $20. And then the page image generate gen generators are usually about 30 bucks. But if you use Magi, it's, um, $29 for the business level and you get the words and the image generation. So it saves money. Um, and 20 is it, not that bad. No, it's, it's $29 a month right now for the, for the thing, but, but it comes with pre preset roles. Like it has a copywriter. It has um, an assistant. It has like, you can tell it, you can go and look which person you, which assistant you want. And that already has some skills built in, which gives it a head start. Um, I'm still experimenting with it. So I'm, I'm not a hundred percent to where I'm like, I could, sometimes I'll just jump into chat GPT because I know what I'm doing there because I've been using it for quite some time. Um, but I'm learning the new tools just because things are shifting all the time. And if one tool is saving me this much time and this tool is already prepared and is supposed to be better, better then I'm going to try it out and see. Yeah. Yeah. You've already given me a lot of, to think about company wise in my business, but also with, you know, personal writing, how it could help me and maybe help me save time, but also just understand my own thoughts better. It's almost having a conversation with yourself. It for, is. And, and for in a different way. Yeah. For creative writing purposes, it's more of a, it's a brainstorming and thought bounce back, like instant feedback. Mm -hmm. When you get a itch to write at two o'clock in the morning, you don't have anyone to bounce your ideas off. You can just ask, ask the chat and then you can also check for originality by saying you know i have this idea is this common and it'll tell you oh i found this other places mm. or, no i don't know that and yeah you can you can wow. the only limitation of what you can ask for the most part is your imagination i mean if there are themes and topics it's not allowed to discuss um but as long as you're not trying to in that type of limitation trying to go beyond its limitations um the quality of the questions you ask is going to determine what you get out. So you're only limited yeah. by your own imagination. It's I love that. Really fun. Imagination. She said imagination and AI in the same sentence. Can you, can you believe it? <laughs> We're paying attention if you're listening. You to have to get creative to ask it what you want in a way that will get the results that you want. And it's a process. I've spent it is a process. months at this point figuring out questions to ask to get the results that I want. But But it's never the same. So if you think, oh, I'm going to write out these prompts and I'm going to follow this script exactly, you're going to get wonky results because it's a conversation. And just yep. like when you're having a conversation with a human, people go off script. The AI will go off script. It will start doing something and you're like, what are you doing? Come back to me. Like, no. <laughs> I love that. So let's talk about your class then for a minute sure. and how it can help. Because you did mention that you're teaching evergreen content for both creative and professional you know, business writers. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, do you break it down into steps? Is it like a long course? Is it a short course? Like, tell us a little bit about oh, this. It's, so this it's just it's a two hour workshop and okay, start with content strategy, content marketing strategy, so that you have a foundation of knowing why we're going to create the content and where the content we're creating fits in. Um, mm -hmm. And what also what other marketing you should be doing. But I'm literally teaching just a sliver, which is evergreen social media marketing content so that people are aware that you have mm -hmm. something to sell. Uh, and it's the kind of thing where it's not time sensitive. It's actually not promotional. It's speaking to the things that your core audience is interested in so that they're interested in looking at you so that when you sell something, they're there to buy it. They're looking. Yeah. 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 So then I do live, live demos of chat GPT and also of Canva bulk create, which is mind blowing. So by the time people leave, they have created 30 days of marketing content, the captions, like the written text part and the, the graphics. And In two brand. hours. Wow. Well, it, it only takes about 20 minutes to create the 30 graphics. And that is crazy. Through. So I go through it twice. I do two live demos. Um, it's a hot seat. So I use a live participant um, mm -hmm. and we go through that twice. Last time we did it, um, the people were so like prepared and knew themselves so well that we ran through the the content parts only 20 minutes and then the demos are usually the rest and they were so fast we 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 ended early it wasn't even two hours wow wow because <laughs> i'm not going to make people sit there when we're finished yeah. oh yeah 
Yeah. I love that. That's awesome. I think, I mean, that could be helpful for me, certainly. And I hope that it, for those Mm -hmm. that are listening, they recognize the piece of value that that is, that it's not promotional, that you're just learning how to give good content through your social media. And again, social media, that's a flag. Like if you need help with this, this is a great place to go because everyone's scared of that, right? We're scared of wasting our time on social media and not getting anything back from it. And I, I mean, Mm -hmm. I myself have had lots of effort put in and not as much come out right and so just so, having that as a you know yeah, key Cam- canva book create really is um a ma- it's, a, it's a magical tool because you can put your 30 things in there and it'll give you 30 like 30 graphics wow like in in a matter of minutes and yeah it's just one of those things where i'm like you could spend like an entire day creating all of this content or you could do it in 20 minutes and move on to higher level things that you need to be doing because you still have to go schedule you still have to go put it in your scheduler and that's going to be a little bit time consuming no matter how quickly you made the content you still have to schedule it to go out so you're still going to need some time Mm -hmm. but just reducing the amount of time that it takes makes makes this marketing every day something that can be done regardless of your budget because I mean the workshop's only $47 and I give a workbook on how to do the chat part and I give a cheat sheet on the Canva part because people are going to leave and go I don't remember how to do it so I have a (laughs) step-by-step guide so you can remember (laughs) and you get the replay but it's just one of those things where like you do this once a month and you've got content that's always going out plus once you do it really well once you can reuse the ones that people like Mm-hmm. You don't need to come. You, one of the first things I'm teaching is you do not need to come up with new content all the time. No, just repurpose, don't. repurpose people. Well, re, repurpose, but also flat out repeat. Yeah. Repeat. Because that. as soon as you think that you've said something enough to where you might be irritating and turning people off, you're probably getting close to posting it enough. People That's don't see what you're, people don't see what you're saying. And it's the only people who might get irritated are your very, very best friends and family who have you on favorites and see everything. And if they don't love you enough to see everything over and over again, they're not really your friends. <laughs> you're weeding out bad friends <laughs> and you're marketing better at the same time. You just tell your friends, most people only see every 20th thing that I post. So I have to put it out there a lot. And just, if it bothers you, put me on mute. I love that, Laura. I'm not here to... Like be fluffy. I'm on Facebook to make money, like for real. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I post pictures of all my stuff and I, I use it as an appropriate, like friendly place. But I'm just saying, if people have a problem with you trying to sell your books when that is how you make your money, then too bad. Look again. Yeah. Too bad. Sorry about that. So oh my sorry. gosh. You have shared so much value in such a small <laughs> amount of time. And I, I love it. I feel better about AI even, even though I already kind of went on this journey and I am more excited to try and really utilize it as the tool that it is and and take advantage of its mm-hmm. components. And, and just, so before we sign off, I want to ask, where can we go for more of you? You know, where can we visit to, to sign up for that workshop? Mm-hmm. So if you go to, um, Firstly, I'm Laura Pensitencio. My company is Social Savvy Geek. So if you put those into any of the search engines, you'll find me. Lots and lots of me. But um, my all of my things I keep at Linktree at Social Savvy Geek. And uh, the workshop is the very top link there right now. So mm-hmm. and my website is socialsavvygeek.com. Um, I'm on X, which was Twitter, Social Savvy Geek. It's still my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Instagram. I'm on, I'm all the places because I am a full-time digital marker. It, it, it is my job it is what I do. So I'm nearly everywhere. Um, mm-hmm. I don't TikTok. I'm not there. Psh, do not look for me on TikTok. I'm Gen wow. X. I don't have time for short-term video. Mm-mm. That's okay. I think we have you in enough of the other places that we can find yeah. you. If we but basically you. social savvy geek, anywhere you find it, that'll be me. Okay. Well, I love it. We'll put that in the uh, comments below and underneath the resources for all of you who want to check it out. Check out her workshop. Mm-hmm. Check out how you can continue that membership. Look at what she's got coming up and and use her social media posts as an example. If you're looking for something that's good and honed and you know something that's working against audiences, I'm sure she has had plenty of experience in posting <laughs> that you could use that as a reference at least or as a, as a special I can direct you to priorities. my clients to look, look, look at. <laughs> Yep. See, yeah. So thank yeah, you, you, can, you can put a time on my calendar as well if you don't want to wait for the workshop because it's at the end of the month. So if you're like, I need it now, right. then just reach out. I can just book a time with you personally. Yeah. Okay, great. That's even better. It's available yeah. all the time. <laughs>
So well, thank you for coming on, Laura. I'm going to have you stick around for a minute. But okay. to all you war wizards out there, I hope you're listening. I hope you know that you have so much more potential and creativity to market yourself and use that AI and just just move with this crazy life of technology that we have. And I encourage you to keep reading, keep writing, and we'll sign off with the uh, the usual, which is write 